Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editorial Director of Semiconductor Manufacturing and Design. I'm here with Juan Ray of Mentor Graphics. Juan, we're dealing with unbelievable complexity going forward. We've got double patterning, multi-patterning. We've got all sorts of issues in terms of physical effects that are coming out. How does this affect design? How does it affect manufacturing? And what does it mean for the future of both? So, well, let's first recognize that uh, this is a problem that uh, we as an industry has been facing uh, node after node. Now, we shouldn't minimize uh, the fact that um, uh, current nodes that are under development today are certainly um, a lot more complex than previous ones. And the examples that you brought up of double patterning or multiple patterning uh, are certainly uh, good examples. They are good examples of um, how what happens on the manufacturing side impacts what needs to happen on the design side in order to get manufacturable devices. Um, there is a need for then for first uh, much improved communication between the two communities. And uh, clearly that has been happening um, generation after generation of the most recent technologies. Uh, we see a need for even more communication uh, in order to um, be able to proceed with uh, devices that ultimately will work. Um, now, um, one of the areas that uh, has been growing in importance is the area of uh, putting more restrictions on the designs. And uh, those essential restrictions need to be um, followed all the way through, uh, starting with the earlier um, custom design components and continuing certainly through the complete physical uh, design implementation. Does this mean more design rules for everybody? Certainly. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, there are some things that may alleviate that. For example, going to um, much shorter uh, wavelengths uh, of exposure, like what it is in principle promised by extreme UV, could actually um, alleviate that issue um, to some extent, but uh, not completely. So, so yeah, that's certainly the case. Now, what that creates then is essentially a need for getting tools that are a lot more integrated, given that um, those uh, design restrictions uh, need to be uh, verified and certified before uh, sending the design for the actual manufacturing stage. Then it's important to actually do checks that are very realistic um, very early on the design stages. And one way to actually alleviate that problem is to get better integration between the tools that are ultimately used for the final verification and the tools that are used for design creation. So from a design standpoint, what the design engineers are looking at for the first time is really understanding how their design is going to hit manufacturing. These are worlds which generally were sequential before and didn't have to mesh on a uh, concurrent contemporary type of, of level, right? Um, well, um, there is a lot of concurrency that currently already exists uh, in uh, the, the industry. And an example of that is IP creation. Uh, there are several teams that are creating um, different uh, parts of the design in parallel, but there is always a step in which the complete design needs to be assembled into an SOC, for example. And um, the, uh, even though you may have the different design teams may have been following uh, to the letter, all the uh, checks and verifications that need to be done uh, earlier on um, during that step of the integration is still necessary to, uh, to do uh, the additional checks just by virtue of the complete integration of the design. As we move down Moore's Law into the next node, which is both 20 nanometer and then 14 nanometer, what changes from the design side, the DFM side, and also the manufacturing side? Well, we have seen that uh, the um, coming up of uh, immersion lithography certainly helped a lot to continue with the standard photolithography uh, roadmap. Um, however, uh, there are very critical physical limits to it. And so several different techniques uh, have been coming into production. 
One of them is multiple patterning in the form of double patterning, uh, which uh, certainly is coming into production uh, for 20 nanometers. When looking at 14 nanometers, things get uh, even more difficult. And um, there are techniques that are being explored even now to try to figure out uh, which one will ultimately uh, be used in production. And they range from extreme UV to direct right to some different forms and more advanced forms of multiple patterning. Uh, interestingly enough, what comes from the research labs is that um, uh, 14 nanometers can pr be produced and with, um, with um, any one of these techniques. Um, the key issue is that the level of maturity that is required for production and the cost associated to each one of those techniques is different for each one of these techniques. And so it is a little bit uncertain regarding um, what it will ultimately be used. Most likely, uh, some advanced form of multiple patterning will, will be used. If it is double patterning, given the previous experience that exists, um, most likely that's, that will not be that disruptive. Um, and uh, it has the advantage of uh, seeing at least some level of production in one node. Um, if it is any one of the other techniques, uh, there is a lot more risk involved. The impact on the design side, again, seems to be more restrictions on uh, the design rule creations and how they are going to be adopted early on and how early in the design um, stage people need to be aware of what will be used to be able to create something that can be designed. One of the solutions to the, what you're talking about here on the complexity and the, the difficulty of getting to the next nodes has been the idea that everything gets built in the process node that makes sense. So you stack whatever is necessary into a 3D stack, whether it's 2.5D or 3D, everything gets built into something that is reasonable. What effect does that have on design? Well, it has an impact on first uh, deciding uh, what needs to go in each one of the dies that are going to be integrated in that manner. So the first part is to do, do the partitioning at the level that uh, make things work. Um, then um, in the early stages, what we're seeing is that partitioning at a macro level uh, in which very well-defined um, circuits are manufactured in different technologies is the direction where things uh, are going. Uh, even at that stage, um, parasitic interconnect uh, is one of the first areas that get affected. Um, most likely you are going to have some form of through silicon vias, either through a die if uh, two, through 3D integration is done, or through an interposer if some form of 2.5D is being used. And um, they are depending on what the operation, uh, frequency operation um, range uh, is being adopted. Um, then uh, there may be effects uh, that are more important than others. For example, um, some uh, frequency dependencies on the characteristics of the through silicon vias may need consideration. Um, in the standard physical verification checks, for example, uh, now it is important to consider um, at least uh, very likely three different technologies. The technology being used for the interposer, the technology being used for each one of the two different dies. Um, and um, all these uh, requires modifications on the tools that are used for verification. Um, creation of net lists in order to go from one complete design and database through the interposer with another design when doing, for example, the creation of uh, layout versus uh, schematic or, or, and then the checks that get derived uh, from there. Does any of this affect the yield side? Are we looking at a, an issue where the complexity and the, is now getting to the point where yield may really seriously be compromised beyond what it has been in the past at advanced nodes? 
Um, well, it certainly has an impact. Um, people expect that uh, the impact on each one of the individual dice is uh, probably going to be alleviated, given that you ultimately are partitioning your design into something that is more manufacturable. Um, however, the part that is ne still needs to be uh, tested and uh, verified is the part that comes through the interposer, where um, there are several different types of uh, new checks that need to be added and verification that need needs to be added. The technology there is, uh, in principle, um, simpler. Uh, you have less layers, uh, you have dimensions that tend to be larger than the most aggressive dimensions that are using the most advanced nodes for the dies. But still you are going now through the integration of um, uh, one die on top of an interposer and then in order to communicate with another die. And that is bringing some new forms of um, uh, test methodologies and checks, check methodologies because you do not want to end up uh, losing the investment on the dice if you have, for example, a faulty interposer. So there is this type of um, checks investigation and um, um, certifying that the level of maturity on each one of the uh, components um, uh, is being reached. We've been hearing about silicon photonics. What exactly is that, and how does that apply? Well, silicon photonics is something that uh, is emerging from many research labs and uh, seeing uh, good potential for coming into production in future generations of technologies. Um, probably a little bit farther ahead uh, or away from the other techniques that we we're discussing, um, but not that far away. Uh, it is primarily uh, being explored for data communications. Essentially, the intention is to use the advantages of using light as opposed to electrons to communicate data. Um, that with the promise of essentially getting a larger bandwidth uh, with less power consumption. So, and uh, what, um, what seems to be the case is that uh, there is good potential of uh, using it for uh, not just uh, long range data communications as it is commonplace today, uh, but bringing it to shorter and shorter distances. Um, the push uh, right now seems to be in trying to get die to die communication uh, with expectations of going uh, into the die in the much longer future. Juan Ray, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for this opportunity.